episode of Love Wine, Learn Wine. We are looking today at the white grape variety from Spain called Panza Blanca. So stay with me and you're going to learn all about these interesting characters and that it's used in a quite well-known wine that you've probably drunk a lot of and you never knew. Um, if you don't know who I am and you're joining me for the first time, I am Yelena Doyle, a ex-head sommelier, a wine brand ambassador for a Chilean winery um, and basically love all things wine related. Um, so let's get to the grape and the region. So we're going to Catalonia, the region in the northeast of Spain where Barcelona is. Nice and simple. Um, Aleja is the region, is the D-O, Denominación de Origin, and it is super close to Barcelona, 12 miles northeast. Now, the issue is they have about 2,000 years worth of history. Um, they've always had massive problems as urbanization has got larger and Barcelona has crept further out. There've always been threats of the vineyards being dug up. Thankfully, though, the Sierra de la Marina National Park has now just incorporated this region. So we will see more Aleja if you keep your eyes open in very special independent wine merchants because it is here to stay. Now, the white grape variety in the region Aleja is uh, Pianza Blanca, also known as Charello. Now, Charello, I'll put the spelling here. Some people call it Charello, Zarello. Apparently, correct spelling, Catalonians let me know, but apparently it is Charello. Okay, now I said this grape variety is used in a very important, uh, as an important blend in a wine that you've definitely had before, and that is Cava. So Cava, the sparkling wine from Spain that's made in the traditional method, uses three grape varieties, Macabeo, which is also known as Viura in the Rioja region when they make their white wines, Parallada, and the third grape variety is Charrello, or shall we say in this wine, Panza Blanca. And the actual reason it's a really important component in Cava because of its very, very high acidity. Um, talking of Panza Blanca or Charello. Uh, there's a distinguishing character which you should expect and some people do not like it and that is rubber. I've even heard of people talk of boiled cabbage. I never got that and we're not talking disgusting. These are characteristics that give it something interesting. So either way, if you are a fruity lover, stay away now, turn off, click off. Um, but this is a really interesting grape variety. Lots of normally a little bit lemony characters, um, stone fruits, white fruits, floral nature, and obviously lovely acidity. Health alert for anybody who is, I did an episode on Tanat, and remember I talked about the tannin levels and how healthy it is for you because of these kind of polyphenols. Um, there are high polyphenols in this quite great variety and there is an antioxidant called resveratrol uh, in this grape, in this, and in, in, of course, indirectly in this white. So obviously we're all trying to be healthier. So for the reds, Tanat, I digress. And for the whites, Charello. Okay, so there's your health bonus. Um, now, just talking about this region slightly, um, we obviously, you know, we're by Barcelona, so we have a maritime climate. It's a bit of a microclimate in the Dio Aleja. Um, it's got mountains around it, very hilly, loads of different aspects. They can be very creative and lots of sandy soil. So very quite well draining when they have these summer thunderstorms and torrential rains but then also the water goes all the way to the bottom and it stays there during the, the drought times so that the vines can go the roots can go really far down and get enough water so it's a very cool uh, area to to make good wine um, there are well over a hundred year old vines very gnarly big chunky um, charello uh, grapes uh, growing there. Um, in this wine specifically, they're about 40 to 60 year old vines. So let's talk about this wine. This is Reventos de Aleja. Um, this is a 
winery that's been going since 1980s um, and obviously really really championing the wine so you can see it says tinta nu now this is in catalonia basically it means so nu or now is nine so it comes from tina which is the the vat or the tub or the container vat number nine so they have these special wines that are from their specific vineyards now they do everything separately they they ferment and macerate their wines separately so that they have a lot more control everything is hand-picked and hand-selected and organic i will just get that here for you to see this is a 2017 okay so let's pour this and have a little try so i'm expecting obviously a little bit more of a savory nose <laughs> let's see yeah do you know it, it's definitely it's not fruity at all um let's i will do the fruity components first i can get a little bit of lemon curd um and there's certainly a little bit of apple i wouldn't go as far as saying it's rubbery um but there's um it's there's a waxiness to it um and a slight earthiness it's a, it's quite subtle actually what i really like about it is it's not explosive it's not in your face it's quite restrained um it's it's a lovely smell. It's a lovely smell, but we are talking savory, slightly earthy, maybe even like a little hint of white pepper, but um a small amount of fruit, so let's try. Not quite medium bodied, not super light. I might take it back slightly about the rubberiness. Um, that is coming through more on the palette, but it, it's good. It's textural. Um, you, it feels like they, they have had a little bit of time maybe with the skins. There is a richness to it. Um, Flavour-wise, lots of white peach. It tastes fleshy. Um, and even some like underripe pineapple, but in a really good way. It's a little bit floral, but again, those notes, the fruit and the floral nature is slightly more in the background. Definitely, uh, it's umami. Umami, a savoury kind of character. Um, And the acidity is quite high. I wouldn't, I expected it to be a little bit higher, but I think the texture and the weightiness is kind of balancing with all of that. It's actually a really beautiful, well-made wine. I got this wine, just like the last episode, the Reni Noir, from Wapping Wines, who I have to say, tiny little shop, but they've got some real little gems. I'm oh, sorry, you can't even say it. <laughs> real little gems of really unusual wines. So you really need to go in there they have promised me that they will have this shop online very very soon so please google them and see if you can actually purchase this on the line this is 18 pounds definitely worth it for something that is very unusual and that you can't get a lot of um what would i pair it with so actually i can cheat because i read somewhere about this specific wine and i wholeheartedly agree now snails with garlic butter um if you imagine snails the texture and also that kind of bitty earthiness would go perfectly um i would also just take garlic butter in general i think that kind of flavor the texture will with with any kind of fish would pair absolutely beautifully um because the acidity is quite high something deep fried like um deep fried crab cakes because if you're putting in a little bit of pepper and some thyme and spices in with that kind of richer fish flavor the crab i think that could work really really nicely um again <sighs> quiches because you've got egg i always find when you have something that's kind of eggy you want something a little bit more savory you don't want the fruit and it may maybe um like a salmon and asparagus quiche or tart that this wine would go very very nicely and you know what tapas i'm always a big fan of pairing the wine with the food in that area there's there's something to that and at the end of the day if you think about some padron peppers and then maybe some some olives of course you've already got this vegetal note and you've got then the oily notes but you're going to have an egg omelette there the tortilla effectively with potato the savory that needs something with a little bit of weightiness and you're going to mix a little bit of chorizo and maybe meats that need some oil like some acidity to cut through them and with some cheeses so any of those suggestions will go absolutely perfect um 
Have you ever tried Charello by itself? Have you noticed those rubbery um, notes on a carver? Do you find them pleasant? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comments below. Is there a great variety unusual that you've just tried and that you would like me to talk about? So please like, share, subscribe, all the usual. Um, and I will see you again on another episode of Love Wine, Love Wine. Cheers, guys.